Who is Dr. Destroyer? 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 I am Dr. Destroyo. From the Death by Media Man podcast show, it's Dr. Destroyo. The story of the world's first true supervillain. We're telling Dr. Destroyo in sequence every two weeks. So if you haven't listened to the first episodes, go back and start there. Then, this will all make a lot more sense. Chapter 42 Wayne Boudreau wasn't really a reporter. He'd gone to school to study journalism, but he dropped out before graduating. I do work for Newsography, he explained, but only because I pay them to let me. I've donated thousands of dollars to their site, and in return they let me use their press credentials. His mask rumpled awkwardly as he smiled or frowned beneath it. They don't really have any idea what I'm using them for. He'd come back to my apartment to search for clues, he explained to me, because he thought I'd been stonewalling him for some reason, which was basically true. But I didn't think you'd actually be him, Wayne said. The solution said, I guess. We'd both kept our masks on, though he was the only one in full costume. I was wearing the same pajama pants and dirty t-shirt that I'd been wearing earlier. But that didn't matter. Not really. Only the mask mattered, and the mask made all the difference in the world. I was just going to sneak around, said the solution. See if I could find any journals or anything, you know? I don't think Tom kept a journal, I said. I don't think anybody I've ever known has kept a journal, I added after a moment. I think that just happens in, like, mystery stories. So what kind of story is this? The solution asked me gravely. Well, I mused, it certainly isn't a mystery story. I mean, I'm Dr. Destroyo. There's no who done it to this. I did it, from the very start. But the mystery is about who you are, the solution suggested. I'm me, I said simply. No mystery there. It felt so much easier to talk with the mask on, and to talk to somebody else with a mask on. See, that's the thing a lot of people don't seem to get. Dr. Destroyo isn't about who's under the mask. The doctor is the mask. It's not about what my other identity might be. It's about what this identity is. Oh yeah? Said the solution, nodding rapidly and taking it all in. I mean, I totally know what you mean. That's like what I was trying to go for with all this. He gestured meaningfully at his apparel as he spoke. I made us a pot of coffee and rinsed out a couple of cups. It's an impressive outfit, I praised politely. It looks way more expensive than most of the other ones I've seen, even online. He asked for cream and sugar, but I only had the sugar. I took mine black. Yeah, the solution said, sort of immodestly, running a gloved hand along his outer casing. It's pretty much state of the art. The mask is flame resistant, there's a laser tracking system, a voice recorder, a pedometer, an electronic compass, thermometer, light emergency medical gear, and half the stuff's voice activated with this little microphone built into the mask. He paused and then added like an afterthought. I've got a gun too, just like a little 38 revolver, but I don't carry it on me while I'm in costume. I just have it, you know, just in case. It's back at the hotel right now. That makes sense, I agreed. The solution sounded a little nervous as he explained his suit to me. It was like he couldn't help himself. He just wanted to tell somebody about it all, even if that person might be his worst enemy. I also had the impression that he might have been thinking 
that if he opened up to me about who and what he was, there'd be a better chance of something positive coming from our interaction. I went through a few designs the solution went on, and a few redesigns. I originally wanted something with a cape, but it's hard to make them look right when you're just standing still. The shoulder lines never do what you want them to. But this thing, and he tapped the chest plate, it could take a shotgun blast without buckling so much as an inch. The solution's costume. Imagine a full body jumpsuit made of reddish black rubber and turtled up the front and back with thin sheets of what the solution referred to as a polycarbon shell. Thick black boots that ran most of the way up to his knees, thin black gloves that still left him with plenty of manual dexterity. I've spent more money on this thing than you'd imagine, the solution said, sucking on his teeth a little. I know I shouldn't get into figures, but it was over two million bucks, I'll say that much. I choked a little on the bitter of my coffee. Seriously, I asked him? Hey man, the solution said, shrugging his shoulders like a well-programmed robot. You're gonna do a thing, you might as well do it right, right? That's just... I shook my head at the idea of two million dollars to burn on a super suit. That's quite an investment. I was born to this, I guess you could say. The solution stared at me through the lenses of his mask, holding his cup of coffee in both hands. I was born to do this, to wear this costume. He let out a little sigh. This is my destiny. And it always has been. There's never been any way that I could escape it. And the money? Well, the money is just a means to an end. It's a fuel. A resource. This suit. And the solution ran a gloved finger over an armored plate. Almost delicately. Almost sensually. This suit is worth more than money could ever mean. Hell, you could probably say this suit is the only thing which is truly real in my world. Oh, I said, smiling politely under my mask. How interesting. I got to admit, the solution went on. When you first went public, putting out those videos online, I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, I knew you wouldn't have like a volcano base or anything. What's a volcano base, I asked. Well, you know, like a base set into a volcano. How would that even work? Uh, the solution said uncertainly. I could tell that he wasn't sure if I was fucking with him or not, and really, neither could I. Talking to another masked man in my home felt very strange. It felt like fencing or flirting, like we were playing a game, but a really important game, or at least a game that we both took very seriously. I just, I wasn't expecting, he trailed off uncertainly. A basement suite that smells of pot, I suggested. You eat a lot of pizza, huh? The solution was glancing over at the flat boxes in the corner of the kitchen. It's convenient, I explained. Yeah, so like, when you first went public, I thought you were going to be... He hesitated again, watching me through his lenses. Well, I thought that it was the first real sign of things outside of my own life. A sign that it was becoming real. But at the same time, I sort of thought you'd have, like, a bit more of a structure? He trailed off as he scanned around my apartment again. The dirty dishes, the bong, the unlaundered laundry spread out across the floor. But it's cool. I get it. We're starting out. We're building something. Sure, I agreed. Building something. Ha! It's funny, the masked man laughed. This place, you... I thought for sure you were a minion, you know? Like I met you and I thought for sure that you had to be working for the doctor. But this is cool too. Sure, I said. Hey, you wanna get high? So I loaded up the bong and we did a few hits. The solution wasn't a straight edge first timer by any means, that was obvious. But he also wasn't any kind of a real hardened stoner. I could tell that from the way he got all irritatingly giggly and stupid after just a couple of quick coughing tokes. Okay, okay, so like, here's what we gotta do, okay man? The solution grinned at me. We gotta do this in public. 
in front of people. We got to meet up and then we got to throw down where we can be seen. You think so? I asked him. When I used the bong, I just stuck the breathing end up under my cowl and inhaled through the interior mask's mouth hole. That way I didn't have to move the mask at all. The solution had to pull his mask up over his mouth, and I couldn't decide if I thought that looked kind of silly or kind of cool. Man, it'll be fucking awesome, the solution assured me, sounding less and less like a crusader for justice and more and more like a keyed up frat boy. People already know who you are, and when they see me, it'll be rock and roll, man. It'll be real life rock and roll. I made like I was considering it, but really I had to tell him, I don't know if that's really my kind of thing. The whole putting on a show, that sort of shit. Are you kidding? The solution asked me with a sloppy smile and those big white teeth. You don't know if you dig putting on a show? After the fucking videos you did and the thing with the guy at the top of the hotel? Those were rather specific situations, I explained. That's right, the solution said, punching his left palm with his right fist. Because you're not doing a show, are you? He grinned at me, showing off those big clean teeth some more. You're the real fucking deal. He laughed and fell back into the couch. And that's the thing, man. That's what makes it so fucking great. Because we're real. You and me, we're for real. We're not like those other guys, that Rex challenge and who the fuck else. Look at this fucking costume. He tapped one of his chest plates noisily. Over two fucking million dollars. And you know why? The solution pointed a finger at me and said a single word real slowly. Destiny. He stretched out the S and the T so it sounded like two words. Destiny. I'm just not sure how to take any of this further. I was struggling to find the right words. It's about the public perspective of what I'm doing, you know? Sure, sure, the solution said. I get it. You can't simply sign on to team up with the first guy who comes barging into your home, right? A pause, and then he asked. Hey, I am the first one, right? You're the first guy to break into my home. Yeah, I said, the words coming out a little colder than I expected. Sorry about that, the solution apologized quickly. Breaking and entering is still one of those morally gray zones I'm trying to figure out. Going against the law in order to uphold it, that sort of thing. Sure, sure, I said. You gotta burn the village to save the village. But I don't mean to be rude, he explained. And like, not to you, obviously. Oh yeah? I asked. Hey man, you're Dr. Destroyo, the solution said with a nervous grin. You're a fucking supervillain with a body count. You're the real thing. I don't wanna... <laughs> well, obviously I'm gonna stand against you. The grin flickered fearfully for a moment. But just, you know, I respect your shit and like that. Sure, I said. Sure. And I want to help you, man, he said. I want to take this thing to the next level. I want to see it happen. Right. Hey, man, the hero told me. I know it's a lot to think about, so just take some time with it all, okay? Sleep on it. Consider it. Think about everything I was saying. And then, like, I'll swing back tomorrow and we can talk it out some more, okay? Sure, man, I said. I could feel the mask resting against my skin as I spoke. It gave me a strange feeling of detachment and strength. The solution finished his coffee while we made a bit more small talk, and then, as it neared closer to dawn, the sun climbing its way back into the sky, he left the same way he'd come in. I locked the door behind him after he'd gone. Chapter 43 So, somebody knew. Again. Of course, there were a lot of different sides to the situation. Or so it seemed with a bunch of pot in my pipe and the apartment all to myself. 
I had to consider all the options. I had to look over all the facts. On one hand, he'd broken into my apartment. I'd been invaded, violated. My home base had been raped by his very unrequested presence. On the other hand, the solution seemed crazy enough that I didn't have to worry about him going to the cops. It seemed kind of obvious that anybody who spent $2 million to play urban vigilante certainly wasn't going to pass up the opportunity to take the law into his own hands. And he had money. And I needed money. There had to be something there, something to that. There had to be a connection that I just needed to draw between those facts. Between my self-imposed poverty and the solution's need to waste obscene amounts of cash on stupid ideas. I thought about his gloved hand on the doorknob, his boots on the cold plastic tiles of the kitchen floor. I thought about his secret identity and his costume, night vision goggles and x-ray specs and God knows what else. He believed it, in himself, in his mission, in his mask. The solution believed in it all. It was all as real as anything else in the world. Him in his multi-million dollar costume? What would I do with two million dollars? Buy a bomb big enough to put a hole in the world? That'd be fun. Or drugs. Enough drugs to kill myself and anybody else I knew. Or maybe I could buy some friends. Yeah, it'd be lovely to be able to afford a little friendship. But I didn't have friends. I just had problems. The solution was my problem, and that made sense, since I was the antagonist. I was the villain, the bad guy. I was only the hero from my own perspective. But that was okay, I figured, since I knew which side my bread was buttered on, and other such arcane concepts. So I sat around for a while, just getting high and feeling some very strong feelings about what was going on around myself. It was hard to think of the solution and not see Mr. Scorpio spurting electrified blood through his nose and mouth. Mr. Scorpio hitting the alley floor, a gloved hand becoming a fist, a thick black boot kicking Tom in the face. Still, it wasn't like these masked vigilantes came off as being all the same. For one, the solution had a far fancier costume than Mr. Scorpio, and beyond that, the two heroes carried themselves entirely differently. They had dissimilar missions and disparate methods. Really, for all their similarities, they couldn't have been two more different men. Mr. Scorpio had been, at least for a few moments, quite intimidating and real. But I still wasn't really sure as to exactly what the solution was. Dr. Destroyo is written and produced by Hank Pattison for the Death by Media Man podcast channel. You can subscribe to the Death by Media Man podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. If you enjoyed this, please leave us a like or a comment and tell a friend. And if you'd like to support the Death by Media Man channel with your money, there's a link to our Patreon in the description of this program. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you in two weeks for the next installment of Dr. Destroyo.